Alright, what's going on guys? It is story times of crimes here or Shane Dryer. So uh I have six stories for you guys today. I have them all written down. Well actually two of them I don't, but I know them off the top of my head because they were fairly recent. Uh those two will be at the end. I'm just gonna go in order of what's written down first. But before this video starts, I just needed to put a, a quick disclaimer out to one particular person. Actually to everyone really. Um this is not me, con again, this is not me continuing addict behavior, even though I did, spoiler alert, I did relapse and I'm in a different facility now with my phone full time. And this time, I, I do not care what people say, I do not care who gets in the way, I do not care about temptations, I will resist it all, because if I mess this up, I go to jail for a year. So, um, I need to stay on these straight and narrow. Um... But anyways, without further ado, let's get into these stories. So, the first story is about the time that I walked a total of eight hours just to buy about, I'd, I'd say, maybe it was a lot of weed, it was about an ounce. But I I walked eight hours, this was back when I was in college, and uh, I had had my I had, had phone service at the time, I, I have phone service now, but... At the time, I had phone service, and for a little while, I lost my service because I went into rehab and wasn't able to pay for it, but um, I had phone service, but my phone battery obviously didn't last forever, so about four hours, I walked and, and, and found the drug dealer's house with the Google Maps and actually went, went to his house. He let me hit his cart. I didn't have anything to smoke the weed out of, but he let me hit his cart before I left and for my walk back, and my phone died. Now, I can't remember how I knew... But I knew once you got to the end of the drug dealer street and made a right, it was a legit straight shot. So I had basically walked the zigzag way. Like it zigzagged about probably 20 times, like up and down streets. That's because I, I took the, the, the front way uh, to go. I went basically, there's either the front way or the back way you go from, for the college. And the back way is the way I found my, my, the way, I found my way back. And, uh, that's the one where, the, when I get the story, and I'll have it linked, the story where I got lost in the woods while high as fuck. Um, I basically uh, walked next to the Erie Canal. There's a, there's a trail that, that led through the woods behind the college. And it was pretty, and, and I was there, I went down that trail during the daytime, thank God. But that time when I was stoned and got lost in the woods, I went down there during nighttime, and it was a whole different experience at night. Um, I uh, so I found my way back, and because I walked straight. Anyways, my roommate walked in, so I just went to the basement. There's a basement in this area, but anyways, um. I walked back, and on the way back, I remember I was, I was like, high as a motherfucker. And the elementary school was was, on the, was right on the path to walk back. It was a straight shot from that drug dealer's road all the way to the to to, to the uh, the part where the the trail to the Erie Canal next to the Erie Canal starts, which I knew my way back from that point, so I could just walk straight. Uh, and I remember passing by the elementary school. I was so high, bro. I was like, oh my God, dude. Are, are, are the teachers going to notice that I'm stoned? I mean, that's just having paranoid thoughts. I wasn't worried about the kids because kids are just kids. They don't really matter. Like, not that they don't matter. Excuse me. I don't mean it like that. But, like, they don't They don't know that you're stoned. They don't care. Uh, but the teachers are <laughs> another story. So, uh, but I ended up walking past the elementary school. Nothing happened. I was just being paranoid. And I made it back to the college. And, and that was basically that story. But uh, I remember one of my one of my old friends. So when I when I first started hanging out with this, we'll call the the two kids D and Z. So Z obviously had a dad. And we were at his dad's house smoking. So me, D and Z were smoking at at Z's dad's house, and he had, Z had a little brother. And I remember I was just blasting Pantera, and this kid, I swear to God, starts stomping around. And, and, and growling and, and, and stuff like that. 
And I was like, oh my god, bro. And so I shut the music off, and the, and the kid was just like maniacally laughing and stuff. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. But his dad comes home. And his, I can't exactly remember what transpired. But it got to a point, and I'm usually not like an unmanageable, uncontrollable person, but his dad was like, you need to get out of my house now. I think he was telling Z that he, he had to leave and I had to shut up for him. And I, that's, what, that's what happened, yeah. And his dad just flipped his top on me. And I remember Z was forced to stay at the house. So me and D went and we drove around all day and just smoked and drove, which I would not suggest anybody drives while smoking weed or, or, or uh, drinking or any drugs for that matter because you can get a DUI. I mean, even if you're tripping, not only can you, no, well, you can't really get DUI, but you could kill somebody. You could, or you could think you killed somebody because you saw something on the road that wasn't there, or, or you might think it was a hallucination and run them right over. You know, you can't, you can't use drugs while you drive. Please don't. All right, and then the next story is a time I was almost certain my teacher was using Xanax in school. Now I'm gonna keep this teacher's na- name private, only because. Uh, I don't want anybody looking into it, and I don't want this teacher to get fired. I think she still works there. But the Leroy High School, where a lot of my stories take, take place, or the town of Leroy in general, um, I was in math class. We had a substitute. She was a substitute teacher. She would only sub for teachers. And she, uh, she came in, and she was, like, always so chill and just, like, real. She would talk, like, okay, guys. This how we're gonna do this today. Like real slow talking. I was wondering what was going on. Well, on this day in particular, she started having what looked like to be an anxiety attack. So I was like, all right. And uh, my my friend Keith had a soda, and he was showing it to her, and he had he had pressed down too hard with his nail on the can and it burst open and it squirted all over her dress and she was like ah, ah. And, <laughs> and she started flipping her top I remember she ran outside the classroom and all of us heard a bottle of pills rattling and we could have sworn this teacher was on Xanax I mean everybody talked about it everybody was like why is she so chilling why does she talk so slowly I mean she talked like slow bro like really slow <laughs> so yeah I think our teacher was using Xanax but that's just the thing but this is this is just another quick story now I mentioned these two freaking assholes by name and I'll mention them by name again it's just like the ice cream Ben and Jerry's these two were named Ben and Jerry the ones that snitched on me for for uh, the pills at school which got me suspended and ultimately started my my story times and crimes channel in my fall down a, a dark hole which I'm attempting to dig myself out of and I'm doing a pretty good job at it right now but um, I remember I was so pissed at them I used to hang out with these these two girls all the time and I picked up the two girls and we drove around and I was like you know I'm gonna go back to my aunt's house and it, it just I had been watching like videos on the internet of people egging houses recently at the time and I was like you know what I just want to egg their houses man so I went and got a carton of eggs, and I remember I pulled up to Ben's house first, and just threw. And I, I I have OCD, so I split the eggs in, into half, in half. So, so I, so I six eggs for each house, and I I lit up Ben's house, threw the eggs, crack 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 crack. I'm not sure if I did six cracks there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and. Then I went to Jerry's house next, which is not far down the road, and I just lit up their houses. And and man, we drove out of town after that, drove all the way to... And surprisingly, no one came out of the houses while we were egging them, too. No one came out of the houses, so they must have not been home, or they must have just not cared or not noticed quick enough for us to get caught, right away at least. And we did. Get, I got caught later. And... and uh, we went to Rochester, bought some weed, smoked, did all the unhealthy, normal shit that we did. And uh, then, a couple days later, the cops showed up to my aunt's house. 
And I was like, oh, great. I know exactly what this is about. And the cops told my aunt everything. And they knew it was me because they both got egged and they were both still friends. So they, they communicated to each other. And they were like, yeah, it must have been Shane. So they told the cops that the cops came to my house. I didn't even lie, bro. I should have lied, but I didn't. Because I knew the cops, either I told the truth or I'd get arrested. So uh, that's technically defacing property, I think, is what the, what the charges or something like that. I'm not sure, but I'm not a lawyer, but I, I've been through it a lot. So I know kind of some of the charges, but... Um, Fucking, yeah, uh, I had to go and scrub the eggs off of both houses. That's what you get. Don't egg people. So don't, this channel is meant to be an example, not an, an, uh, not an influence. Do not do these things. I was just a disturbed teenager, but I, I, these are, and this is probably going to be the end of the story as I keep saying that, but I think this is the end because these are all I can remember. Anyways, that's the end of that, basically. So these last two stories are fairly recent. So I actually got hacked on Instagram. I got my account taken and was given it back by, by the hacker. So basically, the hacker sent me emails to change my password or sent me links, excuse me, to change my password through um, a, 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 and the account of a girl I used to know, so I thought she was just texting me, asking me that she could switch her password because she had two accounts. I knew she had two accounts. So I'm a bit of a stalker, I admit it. When I like someone, I I I stalk them a little bit. Uh, but uh, and that's my business, and I can do what I want. I'm not a predator. I'm not a pervert. I'm just a bit of a stalker. That's all. Uh, but anyways, so I, I click on the link and I send them. The person, she asked me to send, she, quote unquote, asked me to send, I didn't know if it was a guy or a girl, asked me to send her the link. So I screenshot it, sent it to her, because I thought she didn't have a, and here's why I thought she needed help. Because I thought, because I know she didn't have a cell phone number on her account. So, uh, and I did, I did have a cell phone number on my account. So I figured, hey, I'll help her out. The next thing I know, I'm logged out of my account. And then I... Instagram has this thing where you can like send them a selfie video of your face to verify it's you. But either you do that, which it, I tried like three times and they denied my request every time. They, they said they couldn't confirm I was I was the owner of the account, which it was clearly my face. And I, and they said, and I had so many selfies on my account, bro. They could have easily took some more time, went through it, and, and figured out it was me who was the owner of the account. But uh, either that or you have to use the backup codes. Or two-step authentication, which I didn't set up two-step authentication until I got back into my account. But um, here's how I got back in my account. I basically threatened. I emailed the, the girl, and and that and at that time I knew it was a hacker. And I threatened him slash her, and I was like, "Give me my fucking account back." And I ended up getting my account back. Um. Because the 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 he slash her went into my account that they had hacked into, screenshotted the backup codes, and actually sent them to me. So I, I basically bullied a hacker into giving me my account back, and I used the backup codes. And actually, I'm surprised it worked. I was able to get back in my account. And then the next thing I noticed, I noticed a login attempt from New Jersey, which uh, confirmed that I was being hacked. And they tried to send my password, but I ended up setting up two-step authentication. What's really funny is the the hacker said the hacker must have taken back or wanted to take back what uh, he slash she wanted to do. So um, I was like, they were like, send me the link, send me the link. I'll text it to you. And I was like, nope. And then I told them I was like, I set up two-step authentication. And they were like, oh my gosh, no, you will never get your account back if you set, set that up. Like, they were trying so desperately to get the account back. It was hilarious. But, uh, because they wanted my account. My account is badass. It's cool as fuck. Check it out. It's it's on Instagram. King Shane is God. Just like that. That's it. King Shane is God. No numbers, spaces, dashes, letters. Nothing like that. But, uh, basically that's that story. I, I basically boiled a hacker into giving me, giving me my account back. So, uh, that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, and the last story, which I think this will take up, to make this video about 17 minutes, maybe 18 minutes, last story, is about my relapse and what got me into this rehab. So 
basically previous to uh this event I'm about to talk about me me and my 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 former roommate uh a g we'll just call him that's the that's the letters of his name a g that's that's his, but he he doesn't go by that but we're gonna call him that um we got mushroom chocolate from the reservation from a specific store which they have two they have three types of mushroom chocolate two with THC in them and one without and in case you didn't know LSD and, and mushrooms cannot show up in a drug test unless they're like extremely specifically tested for uh so we ended up being successful in that. and I actually have it on my I'm like I should not gonna say where I have the videos but um I uh I uh, had uh, a, a nice trip on mushroom chocolate, and so when I got a new roommate, my roommate wanted to trip with me. So I ended up. One of the guys came up to me on Friday. Maybe it was on Friday. <laughs> it was because I I I'm so traumatized by this. But basically, uh, he came up to me. And was like, I'm going to the res. Do you need like? any tobacco products like he asked me if I need a dip a vape or cigarettes and I was like nope but I was like if you could give me some mushroom chocolate and I'm not gonna say where this exact place is because I'm not gonna out these people but there's a place on the res near where my last rehab was where you could get mushroom chocolate where my my previous roommate had gotten it and snuck it in and so I asked him to get that and, he, and I gave him this exact location he was like okay I'll go there and then he came back later that day from his pass and he was like, here, I got you the chocolate. And we, we passed it off discreetly. And I smelled it. It smelled normal. It didn't look like the last chocolate I had. But because the last chocolate had like fruity pebbles and was like, was like, it was like white chocolate almost. But this chocolate was regular colored chocolate. But it didn't smell like weed. So I was like, all right, this has got to be the real deal. Because usually in edible, you can at least faintly smell the weed. And so I ate almost the whole chocolate bar and gave my roommate about a quarter. Now my roommate gets high as fuck. And, and I get like really, really high. And so I go and hide in my room because I'm so, so, I, what I think I'm tripping, but I'm not tripping, I'm stoned. And so while, I'm, while this is happening, and before my roommate was up there, I actually uh, was out before my roommate left the room. I went and turned my phone in, which was, that was the first big mistake I made. Besides eating the chocolate, obviously, didn't, not knowing that it was a weed edible. Because um, I never turned my phone in early, bro. Because you, you could only turn your phone in, you could only have your phone from, excuse me, you could only have your phone from 7 to 10 on weekdays and 3 to 10 on weekends, and it was a Friday night, so I, I, I had gotten it at 7, ate the chocolate, and then um, I, had, I had a video, I actually still have the video, but I'm not going to put it there, because I'm just embarrassed about this, and now, truthfully, I like to make the YouTube videos a square, like a rectangle, not, and if I posted this video, it would not be, actually, I could probably still do it. I could probably still do it because it wouldn't show the full thing. So, yeah, I do have the video of me showing off the chocolate uh, with my phone. But anyways, I turned my phone in at about 8.30, which I never did for the, for the whole three months I was there. So they found that a bit suspicious. But what really so, sold the deal, because I want to just turn my phone in and, and just be done with it. But what really sold the, sold the deal was that my roommate, while he was stoned, went up in, in front, into the front desk and made a huge fucking scene. Like, just because he was schizophrenic and I shouldn't have given him fucking, fucking chocolate to begin with. No matter what it was, weed or, or fucking mushrooms. But I didn't know it was weed. If I knew it was weed, I would have thrown it out because I was so close to getting to the halfway house. But this place is going to get me to, into a halfway house where I can go to get my trucker's license and... Can really be awesome, but yeah, uh, I ended up. They they searched our room. They didn't find anything, but then they toxed us, and they and they they found THC in our system, so that was uh, did not go as planned. And I knew I was stolen because before I got toxed, I went to the bathroom and looked at my eyes, and they were bloodshot. I mean, I hadn't been that stoned since the last time I smoked so much weed. I thought my eyes were gonna bleed, which was like I smoked. This is probably going to be more like 22 minute story, but I smoked like a blunt 
went out to smoke back in the house. Indigo came out and smoked. My, my cousin Indigo came out and smoked with me with her weed. And my cousin Orion brought all his friends over. They all had weed. They all let me hit their bowl at least once. So I was high as fuck. And I think, uh, and then I came back and they wanted to smoke another blunt with me. So I smoked another blunt. But I think the only time I got more stoned than that was when I smoked with my dad. 40 hits off his bong, half a bottle of THC extract and mushrooms. But he gave me mushrooms and I'll have that link as well. Two stories are going to be linked because I mentioned them. But, uh, I fucking, uh, I was high as balls. And anyways, so my roommate, because he made a scene and because he was, he was, uh, mandated by courts, because he made a scene even after the, 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 so he made two scenes, one before and one after we got piss tested. And he made a scene the next day as well. We both got to sleep in our room for the night. But then uh, the next day they put me in the, in the isolation room where they put the people who have COVID. But nobody had COVID, so I got lucky and I was able to stay in the isol- isolation room for three days. And they basically had me sign a paper saying I could stay for 72 hours until I got kicked out. And then I got, uh, and then I ended up getting getting lucky and I got a bed in the detox in Niagara Falls. It's called First Step because I didn't do anything there except smoking the cigarettes in the bathroom, which I could have gotten kicked out for. But Jesus, you know, unhealthy, unhealthy. But I'm healthy now. I'm not smoking here. I'm not doing anything bad here, and I'm, I plan on keeping it that way. But anyways, uh, I uh, I got to stay, and I, I, that opened up, and then I ended up completing detox for about a month, and I made it here. And now I'm going to be here for three months with my phone full time, so it's going to be lit. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. It's going to be sober. It's not going to be any bullshit. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these stories, and my roommate basically got sent to jail. So, uh, and I got away, so let's be good. All right, what's going on, guys? It is, it's Shane here. Uh, I'm not going to actually show myself eating it because you guys believe me by this point, you know. Um, but, yeah, this is a mushroom chocolate bar, again. So, yeah. and this is double-dosed. Sharing it with Steve. Sharing it with this guy, my roommate. That's bad. So, we're going to be lit. He's already gotten his pieces, so this is going to be a substantial amount for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll post a report after tomorrow.